Hot quiz, Pop Shot. If candy grams come with candy, yeah, and telegrams come over the telly, phone, kind of, fuck you, then what are holograms made of? That's right, the hollow space in my breast where once resided hope for the future. A fabulous future when we would change hover car tires, not the climate. And AI would raise our children, not pump out images of Steve Harvey running from Sasquatch. Although those are also very good. My point is, we almost never get the future that we're promised. And when we do, it's in the bad Orwell way. I swear. That guy writes the anti-colonialist essay to shoot an elephant in 1936, and wouldn't you know it, by 1984, several other elephants had also been shot. Eerily prescient. Of all of sci-fi's empty promises, one of the most common is a cordless, screenless, TV-less TV made of three-dimensional light. Welcome to Future Proof, where I nerd out about classic sci-fi staples and their real-world counterparts. Today's episode, Holograms. First, we need to sort out some terms and answer my initial question. So hey, let's choke down a steaming hot cup of quiz and define hologram as precisely as we can. In actuality, what you think of when you think of a sci-fi hologram is called a 3D volumetric display. You idiot. A hologram is a flat rendering of something 3D that you can look at from a limited range of angles, like the little tiny one on your credit card, or that trading card of Wolverine you had as a kid that you could tilt back and forth to make the claws retract. You may have noticed they're also called foil cards and tend to have a kind of rainbow effect to them. This type of hologram is called a Benton hologram, or rainbow hologram because everything's so woke now. Invented in 1968, the technique relies on the same mechanisms as a prism, or a rainbow, I guess. Under various conditions, like say there's a gentle spray of water droplets or a big clear triangle rock, white or transparent light can be made to split into its component wavelengths, which we perceive as stacked stripes of color. Well, if you know ahead of time that various bands of light will illuminate various different and specific and predictable parts of a given image, this allows Benton to create the illusion of depth and parallax using a 2D picture rendered by some light shined through a little horizontal slit. Got it? Got that concept? Okay, so forget about that kind of hologram. That kind of hologram sucks. Today, we're talking about a six inch Princess Leia. We're talking about the free-floating, gesture-driven computer terminals from Minority Report. We're talking Avatar and Iron Man. We're talking Tupac performing with Snoop at Coachella. Actually, I'm gonna stop you there, me. That Tupac thing also isn't a hologram, technically. Well, I wish you wouldn't undermine me in front of the audience, me. If it's not a hologram, what is it, smart guy? I don't know, why don't you field that one? Clips of Job from Arrested Development? Illusions. Illusion. Illusion, Michael. Wow, he remembered my name. And he's right, that effect is called the Pepper's Ghost Illusion. It was invented all the way back in 1584 by, you guessed it, Jean Battista de la Porta, although it was popularized by a guy called John Henry Pepper. And I'll let you connect the dots from there, you genius. The trick, the trick is something a whore does for money. Sorry, illusion, involves projecting an image in a mirror that bounces the light into a pane of glass positioned at 45 degrees from the viewing angle. The projected image is still flat, like the floating TV screens in The Hunger Games, but not the 3D rendering of the city from The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, Katniss Everdeen and the Chamber of Secrets. Incidentally, this means the Coachella people on the sides of the Snoop Show got to see Tupac, arguably the greatest poet of his generation, revived from the dead as a two-dimensional line segment. Dystopian, but it's still a cool effect, whose peak use was, of course, for the 1991 Sega arcade game Time Traveler, where you got to play a live-action holographic cowboy for the low, low price of four quarters every 90 seconds or so. All right, I hear you. If foil cards aren't holograms, and Tupac isn't a hologram, and those little dots you see floating around in your eyeball sometimes when you look at a clear blue sky aren't holograms, then what the hell is? What do you want from me? When will it be good enough, Michael, when? First of all, let's all calm down. Secondly, I already said it before. It's called 3D volumetric display. Admittedly, it's not as catchy a name as hologram, which is why I encourage you to call it 3DVD. Go on, tell your partner you want to get 3D VD, or at least Syphilimax. 
A volumetric display is the Holy Grailograms, a free-floating 3D rendering that multiple viewers can observe from multiple angles at once. To be even more nitpicky, let's limit today's discussion to soft light holograms, meaning ones that are used for display, rather than holograms you can physically interact with, like Star Trek's holodeck. Oh, side note. Volumetric video is also a thing, but that refers to scanning a 3D object such that you can present it on a 2D screen, like a computer screen, and view it from any angle within a virtual space. Yet another cheat is to project light or lasers onto a big sheet of water, like at the Disneyland California Adventure World of Color Water Show and Overpriced Corn Dog Spectacular. <laughs> but a true sci-fi hologram should be freestanding and something I can conjure up anywhere, anytime. I'll even take the ones that are inexplicably monochrome, glitchy, and grainy, as if we've mastered bending light itself to our whims, but refuse to upgrade from the cheap demo version. I'm looking at you, Halo, Mass Effect, Assassin's Creed, and Fallout New Vegas Dead Money, Mockingjay Part 3, Katniss Everdeen, and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Man. So, after narrowing it down, it turns out only a few sci-fi series feature full-fledged 3D volumetric displays. There's the aforementioned Star Wars franchise, which actually shows hologram technology developing over the course of the series. Even harder to buy from a tech perspective are holographic projections like Mysterios or Krieger's Japanese girlfriend in Archer for one very specific reason. Where is the sound coming from? Think about it. Holograms are colored light suspended in air. They don't touch anything or vibrate sound waves, creating the tech to project whatever audio you want from an arbitrary point in space, be it threatening Spider-Man or proposing weird sex stuff to your virtual girlfriend, is a whole separate scientific journey. Or I guess you could hire ventriloquists to throw their voice, but no one wants to deal with those people. Sad, creepy vibes. Perhaps the most realistic, or at least viable holographic tech in pop culture is the one villains use to convene around an empty but ominous conference table. I'm thinking of the Guild of Calamitous Intent and Doctor Doom here. For example, in many iterations of the Fantastic Four, Doom chats with his evil colleagues via holographic projector. This is a little button that scans the environment and transmits that image to a tank where it can be viewed. Compare that to a Google Maps car driving around taking pictures and streaming the 3D geometry to a server. It almost seems like it could be real now. Of course, in those comics, Doctor Doom can also project a solid hologram of himself that can fight in his stead, so this is all academic. If you're wondering about a real, 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 I mean real life, honest to goodness, real sci-fi hologram that's real, i.e. a working 3D volumetric display that fulfills all of my ludicrous standards, it does exist. It's this little tiny outline of a butterfly, less than the size of a fingertip. It takes an incredible amount of power to produce. You can't capture it on film without getting that flickering effect. And if history is any guide, they're just gonna strap it to a robot dog and give a dozen to every police force. But until they do, we get to marvel at the team at Brigham Young, who are able to trap and illuminate a single particle in midair and use lasers to control its position, essentially drawing in space with one glowing real-life pixel. Neat! I mean, it's not gonna solve crimes before they happen, but still. I've been Michael Swaim, reminding you that the cops still can't predict crime yet, so if you were ever going to commit a crime, you should get on that sooner rather than later. Now's good. This has been Future Proof. Give me a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time.